The story of Idris alayhi salatu was salam known as Enoch may peace be upon him in the English language. He was a man who was tall. He was very good looking. He was very calm. He had a full grown beard and he spoke very, very clearly. When he spoke, he was calm. When he walked, he lowered his gaze and looked on the ground and he was a very collected individual, calm and collected. And he used to ponder and reflect and he used to advise with so much goodness. Idris was born at the time of Adam. So Idris met Adam and Adam met Idris. How many generations between Adam and Idris? Six generations. So Idris is the sixth grandson of Adam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Idris was a prophet. And he is the first man to ever write with the pen. So writing before Idris did not exist until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Idris how to write. And Idris alayhi salam is the one that taught people how to write. He came as a prophet to help stop and call people away from acts of corruption which they knew were corruption. Away from their desires, as we know, such as zina and the act of killing. And it is said also in our history books that Idris alayhi salam was the first to take up arms against another army, to fight against injustice. When he saw the corruption spreading, especially among the people of Qabil, and that corruption is spreading even within the people of Idris, so Idris alayhi salam declared war against the corrupt people and he prepared an army of horsemen and people walking fighting against the people of Qabil and the corruption of the people of Qabil and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Idris alayhi salam and make mention in the book of the prophet Idris indeed he was very truthful and he was a prophet Indeed, we raised him a very, very high status. The Mufassirin, they make mention of the meaning of a high level. He was elevated to a very high level by Allah in that he was granted Nubuwa and he was praised by Allah. And he is mentioned in the Quran that is a high level. In fact, in another place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ismail, Idris and Dhal Kifl, may Allah's peace be upon them. All three of them were very patient. So this is another quality of Idris. He was very patient. And Allah says, and we have granted them from our mercy. They were all pious people. So these are the qualities of Idris alayhi salatu wasalam we know. And this is definitely a very high status. However, Abdullah ibn Abbas once asked Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhumah about this verse. He asked him, what's this about Idris? So Ubay ibn Ka'ab said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Idris one day, that Allah will give him the rewards of all the good deeds of mankind every single day. However, the good deeds of Idris, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also give him the rewards of all the people living at the time of Idris. So Idris thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that. And he realized the only way to increase more rewards is to live for longer. And he knew that his death was approaching. So he had a friend from the angels and he spoke to this friend. He says, you know, Allah has promised me this reward and I'd like to amass a lot of reward before I go. So why don't we speak to the angel of death? Let's see what he has to say to say, look, just try and see if you can seek permission to prolong a little bit. So the angel says, look, that is a matter that is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, there's no harm in trying. Come, you ride on my wing and let's go. So he rode on the wing and he was taken up to the heavens. He crossed the first heaven. He crossed the second heaven. He crossed the third heaven. When he got to the fourth heaven, Allah had instructed the angel of death to take the soul of Idris alayhi salam on the fourth heaven. They met the angel of death and the angel spoke to him about what Idris had spoken to him before. And the angel of death said, but where is Idris? He replied, he is upon my back. The angel of death said, how astonishing. I was sent and told to cease his soul in the fourth heaven. I kept thinking how I could cease it in the fourth heaven when he was on earth. Then he took his soul there out of his body. 
And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam confirms in Sahih al-Bukhari in an authentic narration that when he went up for Mi'raj, he met Idris alayhi salam in the fourth heaven. And this is why some of the Mufassirin say when Allah says he raised him to a high level, he is speaking of literally Allah took him up physically to the top and then his soul was taken there. Idris alayhi salam died and time passed. There is a difference of opinion of how much time passed after Idris alayhi salam. Ibn Abbas reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, there were 10 centuries or 10 generations between Adam alayhi salam and Nuh alayhi salam. They all lived according to Islam. During that entire time, they were all on Islam. Meaning, they did not commit shirk. They did not commit shirk in any way, shape or form. One God. There were no statues, no idols, no invoking prayers unto others, no invoking du'as unto others, no offerings to others, or along with Allah. Only absolute tawheed. But what was there? There was corruption in actions. There were sins. It became a big gap between Idris and the next prophet and messenger being sent. Few centuries, no prophet, no messenger. After the death of the prophet Idris, there was the followers of Idris, very righteous, very God-fearing, very obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People used to respect them. They were called, the first man was called Wad. After him was Suwa', then Yaghuth, then Ya'uq, then Nasr. These men were so loved by their people and they honored them. When they died, the people gathered at the funeral of Wad, the first one. Iblis and the Shayateen got an idea. They came to these people at the time of their grief and they found an opportunity to give them a bad idea. What did they say? These noble men, this noble band Wad and the likes of his. They deserve to be acknowledged. We have to remember them. They said, what should we do? They said, build a statue that resembles him and build it at the place where he used to be and make it a moment of memorial just to, so that you can remember them. Every time you go there, you remember them. So what did they do? They did so, but they didn't worship it. So what happened after that? The next generations that came, the shayateen told them, your forefathers left these statues for a reason. They used to worship them, to remember God through these noblemen. So what did they do? They started giving offerings and donations in the names of Wad, Suwa', Yaghuth, Ya'uq and Nasr. They began in their prayers to supplicate to Allah by mentioning their names, giving offerings to them. And he said to them, have a statue of theirs in each one of your houses so that you can remember them. And that's how the shirk started to spread among the people after the death of Idris. And the shirk took over the world. Now there was no one saying, La ilaha illallah, except Nuh.